Hey guys, what's up? It's Zola and we're doing day two today of the text tutorial. Um, so yesterday I explained the basics about how we can go around here on the right and move the panel around and, you know, scale stuff, uh, the width and the spacing and all that kind of stuff, and the height of your text and all that kind of stuff. So uh, what we're going to be having a look at today is more in depth into what we have in here. And so if you see, if you have a text layer, you'll have an animate panel here. Now what this allows you to do is animate all these features right here, everything from fill color to stroke color to stroke width. Uh, one thing I didn't explain yesterday is that your stroke can have a fill and a stroke. So, um, sorry, your text can have a fill and a stroke. So what you can do here, this will stop your fill and your stroke. So at the moment, the white line excuse me, I have the hiccups. Um, the white line through this square means that nothing. So at the moment we have fill and no stroke. If I swap this round, we have stroke and no fill. Uh, you can have both stroke and a fill, which would look like this. So in this case, we'd have blue stroke and red fill. And then you can choose the size of the fill here. And you can choose with a stroke over fill, fill over stroke and all that kind of stuff. So if you want your stroke over your fill, you can do these kind of funky effects. So um, yeah, just something I kind of forgot yesterday because I almost um, never use text with strokes, uh, but you know, just so you know, it's there if you want to use it. So what I'm going to explain today is um, more about, like I said, this animate panel. So what does this mean? This means that we can animate. I, I mean, you saw yesterday when I was dropping the presets on the text, how easy it is to apply a preset, but what if you want to do it from scratch? And what if you want something that's not exactly in the presets. Well, today I'm going to explain how this animate panel kind of works and uh, hopefully you should have a good idea by the end of it. So I'm going to start with something super basic and we're going to choose to animate and this is where you choose what you want to animate. Do you want to animate all transform properties? Do you want to animate just the position? I'm going to choose just the position for now. Now what's this going to do is going to add an animator and I can call, you can rename this by hitting enter. I'm just going to call this position like so. Um, and as you can see, we can add extra properties to this or selector. Now I'm going to just, um, just do position for now. And I'm going to explain how this works. So at the moment by default, the position is doing absolutely nothing. As you can see here, this is basically what is going to affect our text. And at the moment we have zero, zero, which means it's not moving up or down or left or right. If I add one of these, we're going to see, um, text start to move and what we can what we're basically saying here is the state um, that we have of our text before the animator goes through you can also do it the state after the animator goes through but the way I like to use uh, the animators is you need to imagine okay this is what the text is going to end up like which is always you know by default when you finish with your text you're usually going to want it to just be you know like there in the middle of the screen looking normal but you, you kind of want it to start either like faded off or something like that. So just imagine your text is always going to look, um, you know, like this when it's finished. And this slightly off pink is annoying me. So I'm going to switch to like a gray. Um, but then you have to imagine, go backwards. What do I want it to be before I animate it? So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to pretend it's going to be down here before I animate it. Um, so basically it's going to be down there and then it's going to move up. So uh, what I then have to do is go into my range selector and um, just change this this end parameter. And as you can see here, this is starting to do stuff. Um, if I move the offset parameter, this is also starting to do stuff. So this, you have to imagine as this, like the start and the end of your effect. So it's starting at zero, which is here and ending here. And then the offset will kind of move your effect. So let's start at zero. And let's go to, I'm just going to zoom in on my timeline here. And we're going to select one second. And then I'm going to change this to 100. And there we have it. You know, that's as simple as it is. Um, our text is going to start down here and then it's going to move up, you know, as expected or not. Only thing we're doing is keyframing the offset. Now, what if we want this to move, at the moment this is moving in a very linear fashion. So in a very straight line at this, uh, Obviously, it's going in a straight line, but at a very linear pace. In other words, it's not slowing down or speeding up. It's very, uh, very boring. And as you know, when I introduce you to easing and keyframes, this 
is a secret between making your text look good and bad. But if we, you'll see if we add a, an ease into this, it's not really going to do what we want it to do. Even if I move this, like this graph right up, what's it doing? It's basically the only thing that's easing is the speed at which this is going through the letters. So obviously as we get towards the end, it's kind of slowing down, but here it's going really quick and this looks horrible. So this is not what we want to be, you know, how do I affect the easing? Cause I want my letters to come in and kind of ease in as they get to the top, right? Well, this is done slightly different in the text parameters. And the way we do this is with this shape. Now, um, what you want to choose is almost always ramp up, right? Now let's play this. So you, you need to imagine square as in like square, straight lines, really linear. And this, you know, this is what square looks like. Very boring. Squares are boring. Let's choose ramp up and see what that does. Okay, so this is kind of doing something different. But if we go to the first frame, we'll see that this almost has the effect half applied. And the reason this does this is you, you need to almost kind of like um, imagine this. So what I'm going to do is, I think I did this in my other text tutorial. I haven't watched it, I have to confess. So I'm going to turn um, our stroke off here. And I'm just going to make a cube to demonstrate what is happening. So um, you need to imagine that almost like this cube is moving through the text when we have this on square. So um, I'm going to try and keyframe these to um, move at the same speed so that you can kind of visualize what's happening. So with the square feature, this is almost what's happening, right? So you have a square kind of almost pushing this up in a linear way. When we change to um, to uh, ramp up, what we do is I'm going to change this rectangle path to bezier path. So what we're doing is almost like this. So um, I'm going to change this to convert vertex tool and change this to more of like a curve. I'm going to move this here. It's kind of like um, I'm going to change this as well. And you know, this is very rough, but you know, you need to, I'm just trying to give you an idea of what's happening. It's almost doing this. So the difference between now square, uh, when we change this to, if we go back into here, change it from square to ramp up, this is what's happening, right? Now the difference is, uh, because we're starting at hundreds, this square is almost starting basically here. So this is what's happening now. Now the way we change this is really simple. We come to offset and we change this to minus 100. And now what we're doing is moving this whole thing back here. And so now this is basically what's happening. Okay, I hope that kind of makes sense. And we can, so if I, if I hide this shape um, and we preview this, it's gonna look like this, which is a lot better than what we had before, but we can change this even more by uh, changing this easing Parameter. So now let's see what that looks like. And there you go. That's probably more what you would consider good animation. If we turn this the other way, we're going to have this kind of like, you know, the alternate of those. And if we change to ease and low, let's see what happens here. So there we go. It's easing in the other way. And that's easing out. So maybe we want it like this. That's not great. That's kind of different. But, um, there we go, like ease low is cool, or what I usually do is change this to, um, you know, to uh, minus 100. Because that's usually, to me, what kind of looks good. If we add motion blur now to this and to our comp, you can't really see it because it's all happening pretty quick. Um, but there would be motion blur there if uh, this was moving quick enough. Oh, we can kind of see it here if I move in. As you can see here, there we're getting a bit of kind of um, motion blur, but not too much. So um, what what can we mess about with now? Well, we can randomize the order of this, which will do this, which is kind of cool also. And uh, if you don't like the order these are going up in, you can just change the seed. And then if we play it now, the A is going up first, and you know, etc., etc. Uh, I'm going to turn that off. Now let's have a look at uh, some of the other ones we can have, um, you know, we've got, at the moment we're doing characters, if you had loads of words, um, so if I change this to 
day two text uh, animates, which isn't really, you know, it's not really a sentence that makes sense, but you know, we're kind of winging it here. So let's have a look at what this is doing now. So there goes the word up by itself. Now, if we come into here and come back to text uh, and change this to, so if we go to our text and we're going to come down to the position, which is what we're animating, back into the range, going to advanced, which is where we were. We change this from characters to words. Now we can see the words are going up, right? If we go, switch back to characters, you can have characters excluding spaces, which is almost the same. And then we can have lines if we had lines of text, um, which let me just demonstrate that for the sake of argument. Copy and paste and paste. Now let's watch that. And as you can see, now we've got our, our lines doing that. So I'm just going to undo. So there, hopefully um, you've, you're seeing here what uh, the power of this. Now, uh, at the moment, I've only got a position and I'm aware I'm already on 11 minutes. So I'm just going to show you about adding a different thing. So this might be cool. And in terms of the way it moves, we like it. I'm going to change this back to characters. And also I'm going to randomize it. So we have our characters randomly animating up. But what I can do now is, you know, maybe we don't want the characters to be visible until they go there. Well, we've you need to see this thing we've set up as, um, you know, a selection almost. So we're selecting, all this in here is selecting which characters go up first. But the actual parameters that we're affecting is selected in here. You know, we select a position and we set the before position, which is, you know, down here. Um, if we move the left position, our characters would be moving in this direction as well. If we moved it right, our characters would be doing that and so on and so forth. If we move this to minus 100, they'd be coming in from the top and the bottom and so on and so forth. So let's move this like this. But what you can do now is add another property to this. So let's add opacity. So at the moment we're moving, but also let's try and set the before state to having zero opacity. And now our characters are zooming in, uh, you know, scaling in from being invisible. So we've set the position to be minus 147 down and 135 left. Sorry, 147 left, 135 down and the opacity to be off. And then once the you know animator has done its thing and been through in this shape, um, you know, our text looks normal. And so you can add stack as many as you this. Maybe we want this to be really blurred as well when it's off. So we come into here, add a blur and just make this like super blurred. And now our characters are going to come in from being blurred and invisible and into place. So hopefully, you know, that explains how these basic animation parameters work. I think I'm going to do one more lesson on text um, and I'll go in and kind of explain what all of these do in case you're um, confused because there's also a little menu here called um, where is it in the here we can choose the selector now in the moment we've got a range but we can choose wiggly and expression so I'm going to show you what those do in the next lesson so I hope you'll join me for that thanks for watching as always like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one